Hey, it's Chuck Karstensen, Remax Results. I haven't done a market update for a little while since we've been in the coronavirus, COVID-19, uh, you know, market situation. If you remember, or if you follow closely, or even if you don't, I'll let you know that I did a video probably pretty much right up front when things were starting to really shift, which had been, I don't know, around March 13th, 14th. So almost about four weeks ago. And then I did a quick update a few days later. Every once in a while, I'm taking some snapshots of what I talked about in those live videos, and then we're posting some on YouTube for a little more, a uh, little less, or a little smaller bite size of information, content, things that can help you. I know real estate's not a front of your mind if you're not currently in the market. If you are thinking about buying or selling a home or currently in the market, or if you're a realtor, then it's more front of mind, or obviously if you're in a real estate related business. So um, these are my thoughts, my opinions, my experience, and what I think will happen. So I did a video, like I said, up front around March 13, 14, sometime in there. And, and I don't have much to really update you on as far as my predictions, meaning I think so far they're looking like they're gonna be pretty accurate. But if you didn't watch that, you might not know what those are. So I'm happy to continue to uh, chime in a little bit with those. So what is different is probably where I'm gonna start. Probably what was different than say a month ago is once we had the stay at home order a couple weeks ago, showing start to slow way down. We can still show houses. So if you're a buyer, seller, somebody out there thinking about real estate, we can show still show houses, but of course that drops showings down at least 50%, I would say probably a little bit more. Um, maybe even 70% depending on on where you're at. So there's a lot less showings. And the reason why is people who are not really buyers are, are basically like, hey, we're not letting you in the house. We're maybe in the past, uh, and no fault to anybody you know, else compared to us or anything, we would take people that we met online or knew, no, kind of like it sounds like they can buy a house, but we'd still show a house. And that's a lot of people out there that do that or a lot of agents. Now, obviously, I know there's hardcore like, hey, you're coming into my office, you're getting a pre-approval before you go out. But there's situations where you know somebody can buy a house. And now when we bring up, hey, are you pre-approved or this seller wants you pre-approved, which is pretty normal, um, a lot of people just disappear. It's kind of funny on these Zillow leads we get there. Like, I don't want the house anyway. Literally, they almost talk like that too. It's kind of funny. It's like, okay, you don't have to be crabby about it. They just don't want somebody just wandering through their house for no fun. So that's one slight change, but that's nothing to do with predictions. Um, what I'm seeing with the curve starting to flatten and you know the experts who predict it, you know, like needing way more hospital beds starting to you know, not not be accurate. I think what's going to happen, which I thought up front, is that real estate will bounce back pretty quickly. There was moments in there, because this changes day by day, there was moments in there where it's like, oh, that's going to be really bad. Now, it depends which news station you watch or listen to, and you shouldn't listen or watch much news. If you watch one news station, they're probably like, hey, it's going to be 18 months. Yes, I'm sure the virus will be around for a while. Or if you watch something else, they're like, we want to open the economy tomorrow. And then there's the in-between. And the in-between is, um, I'm sure once they get smart and start to realize what's really happening and what we're dealing with, they'll start reopening a couple things here and there and wrap it up slowly, which is probably a good way to go. But real estate will be one of the fastest things to ramp back up. So if you are going to be in the market for buying or selling, here's what that means to you. If you're buying, I wouldn't wait a month and a half to buy because I think when it does ramp back up, we're gonna get back to more activity where it's gonna be a little bit tougher to buy the houses because a lot of sellers are just behind the curve on getting out there. There's low inventory, which I've told you multiple times in any videos that I've done that the prices in Minnesota, in most pockets, most areas aren't dropping. They're not going up, but they're not dropping. So what's happened with this slowdown is a couple of our buyers that we worked with that probably wouldn't have been able to get a house if it had been a regular spring market are under contract. They're ready and moving forward to buy a house. Like they're they're signed up with a uh, accepted offer. Probably wouldn't have happened if this did not happen. So are you one of those buyers? Who would be one of those buyers? Somebody looking in that starter range, and if you look online now, 
or you look in line in two weeks or a month, there's not going to be many houses out there for you. And if there's more people back in buying, um, you know, because there's people that can buy that are on hold, and then there's people that can't buy right now because their job's on hold, um, and then there's people that can buy and are out there buying, there's going to be some of those people back into the market. The sellers might still be slower to come on the market, and it's just going to trickle and, and kind of just be a, a plane where it just pushes out the market longer, and it's going to be tougher to buy a house when restrictions are lifted, is what I'm saying for a buyer. So if you're somebody who really wants to get a house, this was the spring, and it makes sense for you to move, I would start looking now. doesn't mean you have to buy what's out there, but be aware there's less competition, which will help you. And if you're a seller, we've been telling sellers to stick to their plan, list their homes. They just got to be aware there's going to be less showings. This is all stuff I've already talked about. Seems to be holding up as accurate and it likely will be accurate going forward. And it's not like it's gonna spike up this year. It's just gonna be pretty even prices. Yeah, most most prices will still see normal appreciation, which is one, three, four percent. But that doesn't seem like a raise to people because there's still agents and still sellers listing their homes 10% too high. And yes, maybe a couple of people get lucky on those, but in general, you can't be 10% higher year over year. So that's something that I, I did a video on on YouTube that we're posting out to our blogs and stuff that you gotta list at market price or slightly below market price as a seller. So I don't wanna sound all over the place on this. Uh, I'm just covering a little bit of ground that you might've seen in my other videos and trying to keep up with projections, predictions. So there's a lot of people that are having, I would say like overreactions and not, not like buyers or sellers, like literally real estate companies. Now you might not notice this cause they wanna stand under the radar on this, the iBuyers, which are like Zillow offers, Open Door, all pulled out of the market. They're not buying houses. In fact, uh, there was a report on Eyewitness News Channel 5 in the city that last week that Zillow not only pulled out from buying the house, houses, quoting, you know, health and safety, which makes sense, health and safety, they canceled their contracts that were under contract, just like left the, uh, the sellers high and dry. And, um, I think that's an overreaction. Now you have to understand Open Door, Zillow offers, they were making, well, they weren't making any money. They were hoping to penetrate the market, increase their market share. Um, so once they had more good referrals, once they had a larger market share and, and the market kept going up, they could probably offer less and then actually make a little bit of money. They might've been making 1% on each house. I, Overall, it sounded like they were losing money when you did the numbers on them. So, of course, if you were losing money and now the market goes uncertain, you're going to pull out. But I'd be careful. I think what they're actually doing is they pulled out of that. And, and most people aren't that bright. I'm not trying to offend anybody, but 70% of people um, just kind of follow what people tell them. Like they watch the news and that's what CNN said or that's what Fox News said. And they just kind of go with it. And that's what a lot of you are doing now. So that is offensive. I'm sorry, I don't want to offend people. Uh, but, but do your own research is what I'm saying. Do your own research and, and don't overreact based on what some media person's telling you or some headlines telling you. Do your own research and what they're looking to do, I think, is pulling, keeping their cash active so they can go back in the market when they go in at the right time, whenever that is for them, and then tell the sellers that are lined up to sell, oh, the market's way down. We're going to hit you 10, 15% less. And some people just won't be aware and they'll go with it. So you guys watching my videos are smarter because I keep you informed. So the other people not watching them are, are smart. I'm making my recovery on that. And I also know people only watch for like 15 seconds. So they'll probably miss that part altogether. Um, so I would be careful in the future working with an iBuyer, at least in the short term when they come back in the market. Because they said it was hassle free and it was like makes your deal easy. And then they pulled out on all these people. Um, and I'd be careful of the guaranteed offers like advertisements because they, they weren't guaranteed. I mean, they were guaranteed they'd make an offer. They weren't guaranteed to close like they said. So just be careful on that in the future. And certainly we'll remind people that when we're meeting one-on-one -on -one and they bring this up. Um, but I think that's an overreaction. Like I said, they could have broke even on the houses or because the market isn't dropping on the houses they buy. So that was an overreaction. Um, companies that are discount companies, discount real estate companies. I know a lot of people out there like, I'm going to find a discount realtor. It's so easy to sell a house. They're all cutting their staff and laying off people because they, they don't make any money barely. They just, they make a thin margin, 
provide a service that some people like um, because it gets them by when the market's good, but when the market is shifting or uncertain, they can't help you. They can't, they can't profit. So they're, they're in it for profit like any business, but they can't make it when the market's uncertain. So I'm here to give you certainty. If you're in that starter home, second tier home, I am certain that you're not falling off the cliff on the prices. It's a slowdown for showings. It's a slowdown for pending sales. Less transactions. Prices are staying about even year over year. That means look back at 2019 at this time and they're even or up a couple percent. It isn't like, here's what I thought it would sell for this spring and now it's down or up. It's what year over year is and the market is holding firm or strong or close or like I said, a little bit higher in those prices. So nothing different than what I said in my early videos on those kind of things. My projection was it would stay fine. If you're buying and selling, you should still go into the market. If you, um, you know, with the people getting, you know, ousted from their jobs or furloughed or, or laid off, people might be, oh, then they're got, all gonna go in foreclosure. Here's another tip. Um, first of all, Fannie Mae is not foreclosing or kicking anybody out now, and a lot of the mortgage companies are. You could call your mortgage company and say, hey, COVID-19, don't have my job right now. They'll extend your loan, like add on your couple months you missed it in the loan. There's no reason to lose your house, even if you can't make your payment. So those people aren't getting foreclosed. Um, even if there was people that are like freaking out, like I'm not gonna pay my mortgage, I'm not gonna call my mortgage and, and just have them add a couple payments by in the loan, I'll just get foreclosed and live here. Gotta remember in Minnesota, foreclosures take at least a 12 month period. So we won't see those foreclosures for you know, 12, 16 months anyway. But I would say if you're somebody in a tough situation with tight bills, you should just call your mortgage company because of COVID-19 they'll just add your payment if the situation's right onto the end of the loan you'll just have a couple more months of payments so and now more than ever home is most important when we're stuck at home so you might be thinking why would people be buying well they're stuck in their apartment that's a lot of our buyers now and they're like i don't want to be in this apartment i have somebody who's living in a basement with some lady he doesn't really know that he rents from and he doesn't want to be there when you got to be stuck at home more he wants to be in a house so they're excited about buying Excited for the fact they didn't have as much competition buying and looking forward to their closing. So there are people that have needs. There's a lot of people I'm working with are relocated or relocating when we're selling their home. That's why people are in the market. And, and a lot of people don't understand this. Just wanna get this awareness out that that's out there. And then this is one of those live videos I'm kind of skipping around. So I know a few people are jumping on and off. And when they watch this, it, it um, Esther, my assistant, makes notes so you can fast forward to the note and say, oh, that's where he's talking about this thing. So as far as I've seen, my real, real estate projections up front have been accurate. Some of the things I said in my first video, I remember saying, well, they shouldn't really shut down things and close things. This virus has got to take its course. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad they did put some stay-at-home orders in place. Seems like it slowed it down. I think that's a good thing. Also, I do think a lot of people have had the virus, and I do think... A lot of people need to get the virus just to go through this, and that's just part of life, and we have to deal with it and make the best of it. Um, ways to get through it is be healthier, eat healthier, um, exercise more, um, have, I, I mean, I do different affirmations, different spiritual person development readings to get, strengthen my mindset. Like, I'm not even worried about this as from a health standpoint, that's not something I worry about. And I haven't been super worried. I've only spent like a few moments of worry in the business side, even though I know things are slower and um, not like they would be. In some ways, it's a blessing for me because normally it's just crazy this time of year. And now we're just working through it, helping the people we can help, helping the people we need to help, helping um, you know the buyers, like I said, that are stuck in an apartment and want to get into a house. They're buying, helping the sellers that are relocated and want to have their house sold and with the prices staying about flat, it's a good time for each of them, almost like a normal market. So plenty of needs in real estate, plenty of uh, good things coming out of it for for like my lifestyle and hopefully you're catching the lesson, the break, whatever's helping you through this, look at what's positive through this. And then I would say the last thing I want to leave you with is 
Yeah, you have to be careful these companies that do the guaranteed offers and the iBuyers because they just prove to leave you high and dry now and then they're going to come in and try to take advantage of you when they come back. So they weren't taking advantage of anybody before. They were offering a different kind of service that was um, not, you know, weren't losing too much over what you'd get selling on your own. But when they come back, I think they will try to nail you. Um, they're going to have to do things different. So just be aware of those and reach out with any real estate questions. Obviously, we've been doing this a long time. Myself, my sister, Stacy, well, work hard and, and um, stay on top of this. So we're here to help you. Whatever makes the most sense for your situation, we'll tell you if it makes sense now, six months from now, next year, or stay in your house for your life. Whatever makes sense. Uh, we're never going to tell you to stay in your house for your life. We want you to sell at some point. I'm, I'm totally messing with you. Um, everybody have a blessed day. Thanks for watching. Again, reach out with individual questions. Thanks a lot.